friends in uh, previous class we have started with the uh, numericals on uh, three phase induction motor um, for the power stages various uh, losses we have seen then various power stages uh, we have seen of induction motor and then we have seen the relationship between p2 pc and pm and based on these uh, formulas we have seen uh, the, we have started with the numericals in uh, previous class so we have um, completed a few of the numericals i think uh, only two numericals are uh, left okay so let us uh, complete this uh, numericals first and then uh, we go for the um, next topic so the numerical is given as the rotor of a 440 volt 50 hertz six pole induction motor has a power uh, input of 50 kilowatt okay so what are the given uh, 50 kilowatts so the given uh, quantity is in this P two is given. P two is given as fifty kilowatt. Then V L is given as four hundred and forty volt. F is given as fifty hertz. And capital P, that is number of poles, are given as six. Okay. Now next, the rotor E M F makes ninety cycles per minute. So rotor E M F makes ninety cycles per minute. That means uh, frequency. of rotor emf is given fr and uh, frequency is usually uh, measured in number of cycles per second and here uh, number of cycles per minute are given so uh, fr will be equal to 90 cycles per minute is given so divide by 60 so 90 by 60 so it is equal to 1.5 hertz will be uh, the fr now calculate the slip rotor speed rotor copper loss now it's not as per uh, phase so only pc is as okay then uh, gross mechanical power developed pm and uh, rotor resistance per phase if rotor current is 50 ampere so i to r is given as 50 ampere and we want to find r to ph point is okay so this is the numerical and uh, this was asked in december 9 of sppu our university exam for 10 marks and these are the answers uh, given for this particular numerical so let us start with uh, the given data so this is given data p2 is equal to 50 kilowatt vl is equal to 440 volt f is equal to 50 hertz P is equal to six. FR is equal to ninety cycles divided by sixty. That is equal to one point five hertz. Okay, so these are the given quantities, and uh, we require always we require NS. So therefore, NS equal to synchronous speed. It is given by one twenty F by P. So that is equal to one twenty into fifty divided by six. So it comes out to be thousand RPM. Okay, now first quantity asked is the slip. So S is equal to now we know F R by F, the relation we know F R is equal to S into F. So from that S is equal to F R upon F. F R is given as 1.5 and F is given as 50 hertz. So that ratio will be substitute the values. You will get 0.03 is the value of S. And if you want to express it in percent, so multiply it by 100 so that it will become 3 percent. So percentage slip is three percent. Okay. The next uh, ask quantity is the speed. Now uh, speed, uh, rotor speed. So that means the actual speed n. So for n, we know the relation n is equal to n s into bracket one minus s. N s we have calculated it as thousand rpm, and s we have calculated it as point zero three. Substitute the values here. You'll get 
1000 into one into bracket 1 minus 0.03 if you will simplify it it is giving you the answer as 970 rpm so this is the actual speed this is synchronous speed 1000 rpm and this is the actual speed okay now third quantity asked is the rotor copper loss pc we want to find now the relation is we know that p2s to pcs to pm is 1s to s is to 1 minus s and uh, the quantity given to you is p2 so p2 is given to you and we want to calculate pc so if we will take uh, ratio of these two quantities p2 upon pc is equal to 1 upon s or p2 uh, pc upon p2 that is equal to s okay so from this relation we can write it as pc is equal to s into p2 so substitute the value s we know as 0.03 and p2 we know uh, it is given as 50 kilowatt so that is 50 into 1000 so 50000 watt so if you simplify this its answer is 1500 watt 1500 watt okay as it is a power its unit is watt the next quantity asked is the pm okay so if you want to calculate pm then the relation we know pm is equal to p2 minus pc so as we have calculated the value of p, uh, p2 is given to you and pc we have calculated so take um, do subtraction of these two so pm is equal to p2 minus pc p2 is given as 50000 watt and pc we have calculated it as 1500 watt so it gives to uh, the value as pm is equal to 400 uh, 4 48500 watt okay as it is power its unit is watt now next quantity asked is the pc that is the um, sorry uh, not um, pc it is r2 ph r2 per phase is uh, asked we know the relation with of pc uh, as rotor copper loss pc is equal to 3 into i2 r square into r2 where 3 is for three phase i2 r is the rotor current uh, under running condition and r2 is the resistance okay so we want to find this r2 ph r2 per phase so substitute the values of pc Um, we have already calculated it as 1500 watt. I two R is given as 50 ampere. Substitute the values. So I two is equal to P C upon three I two R square. So 1500 divided by three into 50 square. So if you will simplify this, it is coming out to be 0.2 ohms per phase. So this is the value of R two per phase. So which is us. So I hope. Uh, is it over? Yes, the problem is over. Okay. Now next numerical. This is the numerical given. A twenty HP three phase four hundred fifteen volt fifty hertz induction motor runs at one four five five RPM. at full mode so the given quantities are uh, 20 hp is the p out so p out is equal to 20 hp now hp you have to convert it into watt again so if uh, uh, horsepower you want to convert it into watt so one horsepower is equal to 735.5 watt so you have to multiply this 20 by 735.5. Okay, so P out will be equal to 20 into 735.5 watt equal to 14710 watt. So this is one quantity given. V L is given as 415 volt. Then F is given as 50 hertz. And N F L, full load speed, 
it is given as 1455 rpm okay now at this load stator losses are 750 watt and mechanical losses are 600 watt so given quantities are stator losses equal to 750 watt and mechanical losses as 600 watt and we want to calculate the efficiency of the motor at full load so efficiency we want to calculate and uh, this is asked in may 2009 uh spp exam for 8 marks and this is the answer now one thing you can uh, you will note in this uh, numerical is that for every time for every numerical we need to calculate the value of ns and uh, that is the synchronous speed and for calculation of synchronous speed uh, usually you require uh, ns is given as 120 f by p so frequency you have to know and number of poles must be given now here frequency is given to but number of poles are not given to you so that is the missing data it was in uh, this exam of spbu may 2009 it was a missing data and for that purpose we have to assume the number of poles now while assuming what you have to assume is your induction motor runs at 1455 rpm at full load if the motor is running at full load for this speed 1455 definitely your no load speed must be more than this so you know if you will assume number of poles p as 4 the no load speed or your synchronous speed it comes out to be 1500 and that is definitely more than 1455 so this care you have to take while assuming number of poles uh, as p is equal to 4 if you will assume number of poles as more than 4 then definitely your uh, no load speed will be less than the full load speed and that is not possible so that's why you have to assume number of poles as a uh, proper value so if any um, in exam this may not happen but if by chance it has happened uh, it may happen then you have to assume the proper data otherwise you will lead to uh, wrong answer and you will be stuck up not uh, even wrong answer so you um, that's why you assume proper data okay so we uh, will start solving this numerical by writing the given data so given data is p out is given as 20 hp uh, we have converted it into watts by multiplying 735.5 so that is coming out to be 1407 uh, 14710 watt vl is given as 415 volt f is given as 50 hertz nfl is given as 1455 rpm stator losses are given as 750 watt mechanical losses are given as 600 watt okay so we have started by assuming p is equal to 4 so number of poles we have to assume as p is equal to 4 so therefore ns is equal to 120 f by p that is equal to 120 into 50 by 4 so it comes out to be 1500 rpm okay so this is ns value and we require s also slip also so slip and pm also will require so we will uh, calculate first s is equal to as we know s is equal to ns minus n upon ns ns we have calculated it as 1500 and n is given as 1455 so 1500 minus 1455 divided by 1500 so it gives to be 0.03 so this slip value i have calculated it as 0.03 or slip is coming as 3% if you want to compute in percent and pm value we know that pm is equal to p out plus mechanical losses p out is uh, given to you as 20 hp which we have already converted into watts so p out is 1400 uh, sorry 14710 watt plus mechanical losses that is given as 600 watt so adding these two will get the value of pm 
so mechanical power that is equal to 15310 watt okay as it is power its unit is watt now uh, we want to calculate the efficiency so for calculating percentage efficiency overall efficiency of the motor we require p out and p in p out is already given to you p in we want to calculate so for calculation of p in will require this relation so we know that p2s to pcs to pm is 1s to s s to 1 minus s so from this we will take ratio of pm is uh, we have calculated value of pm and we want to calculate value of p2 so p2 and pm the relation is p2 by pm is equal to 1 upon 1 minus s okay then cross multiply this or you take this term on this side so it will be p2 is equal to 1 upon 1 minus s into pm so this is p2 is equal to 1 upon 1 minus s into pm substitute the values of pm and s so that is equal to 1 upon 1 minus 0.03 into uh, 15310 so this comes out to be 15783.5 watt so p2 value we have calculated and p in we know that p in is equal to p2 plus stator losses p2 value we have calculated it as 15783.5 and stator losses are given as 750 watts so add these two together so it will give you 16533.5 watts so this is p in p in we have calculated now as this p out is given to you and uh, in hp in which we have converted into watt so substituting the values of p out and p in so percentage efficiency will be equal to p out upon p in into 100 equal to 14710 divided by 16533.5 into 100 which is resulting it as 88.97% so this is the percentage efficiency of overall motor so i hope you have understood all the numericals so we have finished all the numerical parts uh, uh, numerical part of this uh, unit now next we will uh, if you are having any difficulty or doubt you can ask at uh, any time okay uh, now i switch over my presentation to uh, stop sharing and switch over it to the theory portion of three phase induction motor so it will take some time so by that time if you are having any doubt you can ask otherwise uh, we uh, it is open now I'll share it. I'll share the screen. I think you hear some yes. of the induction motor. This relation we have seen. Numericals we have solved. And now yes, starter. So let us uh, start the topic. okay so uh, what is the necessity of starter first so in three phase induction motor we have seen that the magnitude of induced emf in the rotor circuit that depends on the slip of the induction motor okay that is e2r we have seen that e2r is equal to s into e2 So as e two r is equal to s into e two, so this e two uh, r will be dependent on the slip. Okay, 
now this induced emf is effectively deciding the magnitude of rotor current because the uh, rotor conductors they are uh, for a squirrel case type of rotor the rotor conductors are shorted so this emf will result into the current and that current it is you know that it is proportional to this uh, i2r it is proportional to e2r because the relation we have seen i2r is equal to s e2 divided by under root of r2 square plus s x2 whole square right so that means this i2r it depends on the value of the uh, slip of the induction motor uh, slip of the induced emf of the induction motor okay so s e2 upon r2 under root of r2 square plus s x2 square that is the magnitude of i2r now we know that at start the speed of the motor is zero that is n equal to zero and slip value is at its maximum that is s equal to unity so magnitude of the rotor induced emf will be also very large at start because e2r is equal to s times e2 as s is approaching to unity e2r will be equal to e2 that is it will be at maximum value right now as the rotor conductors are short circuited the large induced emf circulates very high current through the rotor at start that is as e2r is very high i2r will be very high right and in the three phase induction motor when rotor current is high consequently the stator draws a very high current from the supply this current can be of the order of 5 to 8 times the full load current at start so at start if your full load current um, is say x amount at start the current will be 5 to 8 times that x amount so what is the uh, what happens due to this due to such a heavy inrush of current at start there is a possibility of damage of the motor winding so motor winding may damage right similarly such sudden inrush of current causes large line voltage drop okay thus other appliances connected to the same line may be subjected to the voltage spikes which may affect their working okay and due to these two reasons we need to avoid such effects and it is necessary to limit the current drawn by the motor at start and that function is carried out by the starter so this is the necessity of starter so i hope you have understood if not i revise it once what is the purpose of starter purpose of starter is to limit the heavy inrush of current right now if heavy inrush of current is there what will happen due to this heavy current due to this heavy inrush of current the motor winding may be possibly damaged that is the first reason and second reason is due to this high inrush of current large line voltage drop may take place and due to this the other appliances connected to the same line may be subjected to voltage spikes which may affect their working so these are the two drawbacks of heavy inrush of current and why this heavy inrush of current is occurring because we know that this three phase induction motor uh, magnitude of the induced emf rotor uh, in rotor the rotor emf which is induced in the rotor winding it is directly proportional to s into e2 or it is proportional to the slip and this 
I to R or the rotor current which is flowing in the rotor circuit as the rotor conductors are shorted at the end, the amount of uh, E to R, whatever may be the amount of E to R, that will result the I to R. Now, if E to R is more, then I to R will be more. We know that at start, the speed of the motor is zero, that is M is equal to zero, and slip is maximum, that is one. So if S is one, E to R will be equal to E2, and that is very high value. And as E to R is more, definitely I to R will be more. And usually, if you are no more speed, uh, sorry, full load current, if your full load current is X amount, then at start, your current I to R will become high to eight times this full load current value. So this is the uh, reason of increasing the value of I to R. And due to this increased I to R, heavy inverse of current, it may damage the motor winding or it may affect the other appliances connected nearby because of the line voltage drop. Okay. And we want to avoid this two effects, that is the heavy inrush of current, and that we are avoiding it by adding a starter in that. So this is the necessity of starter. I hope you understood this uh, necessity of starter. Now let us move to various types of the starters. So there are various types of starters. They are listed here. Stator resistance starter, auto transformer starter, star delta starter, rotor resistance starter, and direct online starter. So there may be a theory question may be asked in the exam. What is the necessity of starter? And what are the types of starters? Explain or explain the I'll share the screen again. So I think it has stopped. Okay. Now again, started. I restarted it. Okay, let us see uh, these types one by one. So this is the first type of starter, stator resistance starter. So as its name indicates, the stator resistance or resistance is added in the stator circuit. So this is the stator of the induction motor and these resistances are added and this is the supply. So this three phase supply through this MCB, miniature circuit breaker, it is applied through this resistance to this particular stator of the induction motor. So at start, this position will be at this point. So that means the maximum value of resistance will be added in this circuit and slightly we will be moving it and under run condition, this resistance will be totally removed. Okay. So now, in order to apply the reduced voltage to the stator of the induction motor, three resistances are added in series with the, each of the phase of the stator winding. We want to heavy inrush of current is there and we want to reduce that inrush of current. And that we can uh, reduce by adding the resistance. So per phase here we have added the resistance. So initially, the resistances are kept at the maximum value in the circuit. So that is the total resistance will appear in this. So at start, this contact will be at this particular point. So that the entire resistance will be added in this particular phase. Okay. Now due to this large voltage gets dropped across the resistances. So due to this arrangement, arrangement, there will be a drop across this resistance and 
whatever voltage you have applied the uh, as drop is there some less voltage will be applied across this winding so hence a reduced voltage gets applied to the stator which reduces the high starting current okay so in this manner we are reducing the current now when the motor starts running the resistances are gradually cut off so this value we are as uh, motor is started so we will gradually reduce this value of resistance and under full running condition will reduce it to zero and under full running condition means whenever the motor will achieve its uh, 70 to 80 percent of the speed then will cut off this uh, particular circuit resistance circuit from the uh, network okay so directly this three phase supply will be applied to the motor okay so when the resistances are entirely removed from the stator circuit that is the uh, reverse stats in the run position then the rated voltage gets applied to the stator okay motor runs with the normal speed what are the advantages of this uh, particular starter the major advantage is that it is a simple in construction and cheap so cheapest and simple construction and another more uh, advantage is that it can be used for both star and delta connected stator so this stator winding shown is the star connected even if it is delta connected one then also this type of arrangement is useful so these are the advantages but the major drawbacks of this there are large power losses due to resistances as resistances are there this power we are dropping it across this resistances so this uh, the power losses due to resistances will be more and which will lead to the temperature rise also okay and also the starting torque of the motor reduces due to reduced voltage applied to the stator so as we are applying a uh, reduced voltage the starting torque tsh that uh, tst so that tst as it is proportional to the voltage e2 applied to the uh, stator of the induction motor that's why that uh, starting torque will be reduced so mm, this is the working of uh, this particular uh, uh, stator resistance uh, starter next is auto transformer starter so in this the principle is same we are applying the reduced voltage but here the drop across that resistance part will be there so uh, here we have used the auto transformer so this is the auto transformer uh, which is used to apply this uh, um, uh, used to apply the reduced voltage to this particular stator winding so this is the stator winding this is spiral coil rotor and for this particular winding we want to apply reduced voltage so this three phase supply will apply it through this point contacts 1 2 so this uh, phase voltage will be applied reduced phase voltage will be applied through this one one uh, through this point through to go this to this particular winding one then for two this two will be applied through this four through this through this through this and through this so now if you are you will you are varying this particular point then if it is at this particular point then the applied voltage will be very less if this is at this particular point then entire voltage will be applied to the uh, stator winding so we can vary this by changing this particular point okay and uh, under running condition this is at start only we want to reduce the voltage at start and then under running condition all these contacts will be at this point uh, uh, here under run condition so that this 5 and 6 point will be shorted through this so that this 
ऑटो ट्रांसफार्मर विल बी बायपास एंड दिस रिपेयर सप्लाई एंटायर सप्लाई विल बी अप्लाइड टू दिस स्टेटर वाइंडिंग ओके आई होप यू आर अंडरस्टूड इट आई विल रिवाइज इट वंस एंड विल स्टॉप हियर बिकॉज टाइम इज रनिंग आउट so the three phase star connected auto transformer can be used to reduce the supply voltage applied to the stator and such a starter is called an auto transformer starter it consists of a suitable change over switch so this is the change over switch when the switch is in the start position the stator winding is supplied this is the start position so whenever it is at start position this reduced uh, supply voltage will be applied to the motor and uh, it can be controlled by this uh, tapping provider uh, tapping provided with the auto transformer now when the motor uh, gathers its 70 to 80% of the normal speed then change over switch is thrown into run position so when ever it is thrown into this run position this auto transformer will be removed from the circuit and directly this three phase supply will be applied to the stator winding okay so the rated voltage gets up